Good day everyone and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to look at quotes and quoting accurately. Now, it may seem a little silly, but I think it's really important for you to remember that when you quote, it must be to the letter. So if there's a spelling error in the quote or in the piece that you are quoting, you have to copy it that way because if you change it or correct the person's spelling, you are not quoting accurately according to their work. So what is a quote? First of all, there are a few terms we can link to this. Lifting. We can think of plagiarism, which is a bad way of quoting. It's the exact words used by the speaker. Direct speech is the one we usually use. And then, of course, we use quotation marks. And you can see on the picture there, the image that I've shared there, that when we say, and I quote, and we usually go like that. And remember, when you are quoting, you usually say, and I quote. Then you use the quote. And at the end of the quote, you say, unquote. Why do we want to quote accurately? We want to repeat word for word. We don't want to change it. It can also be construed or interpreted as plagiarism. Now, plagiarism is a bad thing. But remember, with the summary, we are allowed to plagiarize a little bit to make sure you get at least seven marks there. It cannot be misinterpreted if you quote accurately. Um, in the summary, we'll try for the maximum marks. And, of course, with direct speech, we want to say exactly what the person has said. It's more accurate. It protects us, especially if we aren't very good at reported speech. Imagine you have to testify in a trial and you can't use reported speech correctly, but you do know the words that the person used and you can state them accurately and correctly. Very important. Now. Specific instructions are given. For instance, you could be asked to quote a specific number of words, four words, or you could be asked to quote four consecutive words. For example, the old man left his car in his neighbor's driveway. Now, what happens if they ask you to quote just four words, random words? Could be any random words, but we want you here to quote four words to identify where the car was, but not just any four words. We want you to quote four consecutive words. And if you go and look, you will see there at the top that we want you to look at four consecutive words. I apologize that it's not in the instruction the way it should be, but we want the four consecutive words. If we look at the sentence and we want to see where the neighbors where this man left his car we know it was in his neighbor's driveway but we can't say he left it in you know the neighbor's driveway we have to look at the four words and consecutive means they follow one another directly so it was we want the driveway and the neighbor's driveway in so let's count back one two three four so the crux here is the neighbor's driveway but it has to be four words so you can't just quote two words so it's in his neighbor's driveway. And there we have the four words only and they consecutive. They follow one another. Very important for you to make sure that you get that right. Otherwise, if you just give random words and they aren't going to ask you for random words. That's not what they want. They want your consecutive words. So make sure you understand what it is you have to do and get that right. Now, direct speech would be the actual words spoken and they indicated by using inverted commas or quotation marks. Peter says, my car is parked in my neighbor's driveway. And there's the picture of the neighbor's driveway. Now let's see a few things we've done here and that is to apply the rules for direct speech. And we've done this before. You'll remember when we did the lessons on direct speech or reported speech, we also had to look at the rules for direct speech. What do we need to know for direct speech? Yes, it's the exact words the speaker uses. So if they use contracted form, that's right. You're going to use contracted form too then. The first word within the quotation marks always begins with a capital letter. Yeah, we have, there's your punctuation mark. There's your opening of your 
punctuation mark there of the quotation mark, first letter's capital. Yeah, we see it again. First letter within the opening of the punctuation, we have a capital letter. Great. So there we have point number one. We all know how to apply it. Then I've also put what Peter says here so that you could have a look at it and see how it applies here. But before you open, there's the opening. And before you close at the end, your quotation marks. So your quotation marks are important. Before you open them and before you close them, there will always be a punctuation mark. Now, of course, if I start with the quote and only say Mary said afterwards, then obviously then there's no punctuation mark before that, at the beginning, before I open them because I'm only putting the Mary said or Peter said at the end. But remember that it's very important. You will, will always have a punctuation mark before you open or you close your quotation marks. And this is something you need to apply to be able to write accurately. If you want to write an, a narrative essay, make sure that you can use something like this because it's going to assist you to write brilliantly. It won't be confusing to the marker. And then, last of all, I'd like you to all try your hand at our, I'm just listening to you if you remember what's at the end, the quiz, of course. Try your hand at the quiz and see how well you've done. Remember that I keep it very simple. I use our slides as a guide for the types of questions I ask. And I want you to try it and see how well you can do. So, practice makes perfect. You will click on the link and complete the exercise to see just how well you've managed to do here. And I also suggested last time that you try to go through some of these videos again, look at the recordings and do the quizzes again and see if you can improve on your marks. So here we have, we have our link. You can click on the link. It will be shared on the group as well. Or you can use the QR code. And I'd be very excited to see a lot more of you participating in the quiz because I think it's important. It's these simple little things that can help you. So good luck with the quiz and keep safe. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.